Yo, what's up? This is Hyro the Hero, and you're listening to Rhino Radio. Gia. Or of Rhino Radio here today, and I'm very excited to speak to Hyro the Hero. How are you doing today, mate? Yo, yo, what's up, man? I'm great. Chilling, chilling. Sunny day in L.A. Yeah, we've already started on a bad note. It's less than 10 degrees here, and you're in a t-shirt outside in the sun. I'm jealous, man. <laughs> you're killing yeah, we get me. The, uh, we get the cool weather here in LA, man. Oh, so no, you're, I'm going to miss that us. if I leave. You're yeah, killing was, us. Let me get uh, so, my charger. Uh-huh. You got some great releases over the last couple of months, and that's the main reason why we're talking today. I'm really excited about all those sounds. You showed us that you have some really great friends, but we finally oh, yeah. jump into the new releases. I want to talk about how things started. If I got it right, if I'm mistaken, um, you had a rough breakup that turned you from rap and hip hop yeah. into metal. Is that true? You got so aggressive that you turned into metal? Yeah, exactly, man. I was uh, in high school, you know, high school, you're a kid, did it with a first breakup, so I was all mad, and, you know, I wanted to express myself, so I decided, like, yo, I was already rapping, so I knew how to make beats, so I took some rock songs and kind of sampled them and just took the breakdowns and rapped on that part, and it was, I was like, oh, this is a vibe right here, so that turned me into discovering more rock music and starting my own little vibe, you know what I'm saying, and I guess rock rap-ish vibe, and, you know, I started getting more into rock rage and all these different things man and just built me up into this did she ever enjoy the track did she comment about that oh yeah she loved it she knew it <laughs> she, <laughs> she liked it everybody had liked this i put on my space and people just loved it man and it was going good i mean i still talked to her today too she'd be like oh yeah i started everything <laughs> yeah <laughs> Very nice. And I started talking to some musicians. Obviously, fans really like definitions. The media really likes definitions. You're kind of in between genres. Do you like definitions? Do you like when somebody says, Hyro is this and that? Or did you say, I am who I am and that's it? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. People, I don't know. They don't really know how to describe me. I don't even know how to describe myself, too. Because when I tell people, they ask what I do. I mean, I rap, but I rap on rock. But, I don't, you know what I'm saying, it's like a whole thing I got to go through every time. So I like having no definition. But I think, you know, everything just keeps blending and blending anyway. Like even rap, they done took little parts of rock. They doing mosh pits and the beats are a little harder. People screaming a little bit on there. So everything coming all into one. It's just, you know, but in hip hop, they think things are rock, but it's not really rock. you know. And obviously with the Internet, we open up to so many people commenting and obviously there are the purists that say that you're not rap enough, that you're not hip hop enough or the metal yeah. purists that are not metal enough. Do you, how do you reply to that or do you just walk away? Oh, I just think that's a old school concept. Basically you feel me as you always have purists and stuff like that, but I mean, that's becoming a thing of the past, you know, so much genre mixing, genre blending the internet, kind of just brung everything together you know how fast this technology is and everything so it's easier to grab a hold of things like when i was younger in high school you either just rap or you know people who did like rock they like rock but now with the internet and people coming together even the sounds change from state to state in america okay i wanted to talk about 2020 obviously a very rough year for everyone and then you come out with the lovely track fight that's all about motivation oh yeah oh yeah I started following your socials and I saw that sometimes you need some extra motivations when you get destroyed in Mario Kart. So what motivates <laughs> you? <laughs> in Mario Kart, man, I ain't played video games in so long. So that was just a good feeling to get back and to go to an old school game like Mario. And then they got the Switch now. So it's even more better. So yeah, songs like Fight, it's one of those things, like, say I'm playing and I'm feeling like, damn, I'm losing. If I put a song like Fight On, I feel that motivation to come out and whoop your ass. You know no saying? one's safe. <laughs> no one is safe. No <laughs> one's safe, yeah. So I want people to feel that every time in the gym, you know, anything you're about, you know what I'm saying? As long as you don't represent whatever's wrong, like hate or something, <laughs> and you use my song to do some hate, then that's bad. But uh, I use it for the right purpose. And I've looked into some old videos, and you're known for doing floor shows. 
Do you think that Corona, once everything is done, once it's relatively safe to go back and play shows and tour, do you think you're going to change something about that? Do you think you're going to be more conscious about jumping into the crowd? I know. That's a tough one. I hate that whole, that this Corona thing happened, man. But yeah, I don't know if it changed me any because that's my show. I love being in the crowd. You know what I'm saying? I don't like people getting sick. And, like if I'm sick, I wouldn't get in the crowd. But I've been sick on tour so much before, you get what I'm saying? Like, had a flu, everything. So every time I'm sick, I just won't do it. But when you, you know, it's just a part of my show. I can't see myself changing. Once people are comfortable, then you know what I'm saying? And I guess this vaccine shit, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that, if that works. I think people will get comfortable again as time goes on. So it won't, it won't even be a worry. Hopefully very, very soon. Yeah. And another thing that I'm really hoping to happen very, very soon, I've seen some old interviews for, uh, with you about a year ago, and you've already mentioned something about recording, about an album almost being ready. And then September hit, we got a single with uh, David Draymond of Disturbed. Yeah. We got one with uh, Chad of Hell Yeah. We already talked about Fight and Spencer just a couple of weeks ago with yeah, Ice Cream Kills. Fire. Loads of singles. Does it mean that I can already start asking about the album? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, yeah, album. See, the, the thing with the album is you usually want a tour to go with it so you can promote it. So right now, I think I'm just like mostly in single mode, but I mean, it's going to be an album, but it's just, You're it a doesn't make That's it. Yeah, You're exactly. Just... <laughs> <laughs> and I got lots to tease too, man. So that's the dope part about it. Isn't, if I didn't have material, then I'd be like, oh shit, but I got so much material, man. I can make songs so fast that it's not really a problem for me. So I believe with album things is more so when a tour would come along. Yeah. So whenever that happens, but if I if I have to drop, I mean, basically like an album, the more I drop, you just basically have an album on Spotify. So. <laughs> You're just going to keep on teasing us with more singles and hopefully once everything is safe and you can start touring, we're finally going to yeah. hear about an album. Okay, exactly. another reason to hope that everything is going to sort itself out. Oh, bro, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I hope I don't drop 10 songs in an album. I got to make 10 more songs or something. <laughs> so. I want to talk about an old um, clip that you released, uh, Ghetto Ambiance. It kind of talks about the old representation, where you come from. But then a few years later, you released a video for Never Back Down. They kind of, I thought, they kind of pushed back on the images of being told what to do, how to look, how to act. Is it something that um, still bothers you, or did I just connect it all in my head? Oh, uh, yeah, probably. I mean, that's the thing with uh, art, you know what I'm saying? It's for the listener to kind of get their perspective of everything. So I would never want to taint whatever image you had as a listener in the head. But when I make a song like Get an Ambience, it's kind of like what I felt at the time, you know? And I was younger back then, so I grow up, you learn more. Then I'm like, shit, never back down four, five years later, maybe. Six years later, and then I come with Never Back Down. So I was probably feeling a certain way that day or that time, you know what I'm saying? So I like to make on how I feel, and it paints a picture or uh, image of that moment in time of how you felt, and it's stuck there forever. You get what I'm saying? But you also, you know, you lay your foundation down as an artist. So my foundation is always the people and representing the people. So that's always going to be a part of what I do. So, but whatever the listener takes from that, you know, that's on them to, to do it. I would never like to give a full explanation of what I'm doing to, you know, dirty somebody's mind of, oh, shit, I thought it meant this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to try and not get you in trouble, but um, I um, wanted to ask you about something serious as well. Obviously, the world is in a weird situation right now. We had a lot of uh, ups and downs over the last year. 2020 brought a lot of discussions, political activism, people fought for their rights. Um, and on top of that, some people disagree with that. Um, obviously, the Black Lives Matter um, started in the U.S., spread to many countries around that. Um, mm -hmm. I was wondering if you feel like racism is still an issue, either in the rock uh, scene or in music in general, something that you feel is not making everyone welcome as it should be. What's your take on that? Oh, that racism always exists and there's always racial shit going on in every aspect of society. That's just something that's been a part of life. And stereotypes and all these different things, you know what I'm saying? So race, racial shit always go on. As far as I could say in rock music, I don't feel like I ever experienced no hardcore racism in rock. If I did, it's some shit that I didn't really notice, but 
I don't take things as even if I, I know there's racial aspects in a lot of things, but it's not going to stop me from doing what I do. You get what I'm saying? If anything, I just have to work harder than the next person, maybe to get to where I want to be. But as far as rock and roll, I I got nothing but love in rock and roll. So I can't really say. I mean, maybe before when I was younger, I thought, oh, rock and roll was white people and this, this and that. So but I was young and didn't know the whole scene and everything. But when you get into rock, it's like it's just all love, man. You know, <laughs> like you in a mosh pit, they're not going to be like, oh, this black person in the pit. We all need to get away. No, they just going to go at you and you go at them. <laughs> That's just what it is. <laughs> So I've never seen really no racial things, even gender, you know, women, women be in the mosh pit. If they want to get it, they, they going hard at you just the same way. You get what I'm saying? So the mosh pit doesn't uh, discriminate. <laughs> there ain't no discrimination in that mosh pit. You get what I'm saying? So I always seen just love. Honestly, I can't, I try to think of racial anything. I, I really never really, and if it was anything racial, I probably just look past it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, thank you uh, for sharing had, that. Yeah, man. I mean, the only thing who had singer of Trapped, the Headstrong, yeah, he's fucking said some crazy shit. But that, that's about maybe the most racial shit I've seen. You get what I'm saying? Uh, hopefully, that's going to be all that there is, and we're just going to move on to a more welcoming, respectful future, especially in the mosh yeah. pit. Very respectful mosh pit. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, man. Before we say goodbye, I want to confront you with a rumor that I found online. Some of your fans. I've been talking about some things, so you can either agree with that or completely destroy it. Um, your fans are saying that your manager has an extra budget for all those times you lose your T-shirt. Is that true? Just to make sure that you always have a spare T-shirt. Is that true? That, uh, that is not true. But I it's wish true. we did. <laughs> because I wish we did. Because I was. Brought, it's so crazy. I did my live stream in... I can't imagine myself performing with a shirt on. Like my first song, I had a shirt. It just don't even look right. I just always have to take my shirt off. It's like a, my persona already. <laughs> That's great. I love it. Thank you for confronting that. Hiro the Hero, we said that there's something coming out as soon as we're free to roam and you can start hitting stages. But until then, we're going to get some uh, some singles. We got already three out there. Great stuff. Uh, just jump in the mosh pit, create a mosh pit, and you're living with Hiro the Hero. Is yes, there anything exactly. else you want to add to fans and listeners before we say goodbye? Oh, man, just check out We Believe, David Drake. Man, Retaliation Generation, Ice Not Kill, Spencer, and a fight with my man Chad Gray. I got some bangers coming. i am been here for a long time. Um, like the UK, uh, shout out to the Blackout. They took me to my first tour out there in the UK. So I got introduced to them and just want the people to know who's now introduced to me from the people that's featured on my band. That hey, I've been around this for a long time. That's why I have the respect from these people to do what I'm doing now. I'm not just no random person. They go, who the hell is this guy? You know what I'm saying? So I've been around, man, and I just want to keep bringing it to y'all. So check me out, Instagram, Facebook, High Road, The Hero, everything. Definitely support that. I've been enjoying some tracks for a long, long time. So more is coming, and I'm really excited about that. So thank you very much for your time, High Road. Uh, thank you all so much. <laughs>